On today's show, according to sources of Tim Cato's, Christian Wood is coming off the bench. Should he? Is it a mistake for the Dallas Mavericks to bring Christian Wood off the bench? We'll talk about that and more on today's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavericks Podcast. Dallas Mavericks are NBA champions. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. The best way you can help us grow the show is to comment anything below. Let us know. What are your thoughts on Christian Wood coming off the bench? I'm sure thoughts about the summer league game will be shared. They that game was was not enjoy not enjoyable in any way. Uh, so let us know in the comment section below. And joining me, multiple time guest, friend of the show, you know her because of her spicy takes on Twitter. What you got for me, SJ? Hello, hello. What's going on? How's everyone doing? Oh my gosh, what a crazy weird <sighs> weird day we just had in MFFL land with that summer league game. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. Um, we'll talk about the uh, Donovan Mitchell potentially getting traded now and the fallout. What that could mean for the Mavericks? Could they get in on it? We've talked about some of those other Jazz players, you know, Bogdanovich or Jordan Clarkson or Beasley, Pat Beverly, even like could we bring in that could we bring in that guy finally after a couple years of of flirting with that. So we'll talk about that. But first, let's start with this. So Tim Cato at The Athletic put out an article talking about where the Mavericks stand right now, basically. And he wrote out the depth chart and said, I've been told the team is planning to keep Reggie Bullock as the fifth starter as things currently stand. The team's splashiest acquisition of the summer, Christian Wood, will come off the bench. This is coming off the comments from Jason Kidd that we talked about on the podcast a couple days ago about JaVale McGee. And Spencer Dinwiddie definitely starting. That's from Jason Kidd, the coach. He's the one that makes the decision. He's the one that decides who starts. And he said Spencer Dinwiddie and JaVale McGee are going to start. Obviously, we know Luka's going to start. We're assuming Dorian's going to start too. And now the fifth starter, according to Tim Tim Cato, is going to be Reggie Bullock. SJ, do you think it's a mistake bringing Christian Wood off the bench? I think so. Um, and I I'm just confused because... Like when the trade first happened, everyone assumed, okay, Christian Wood is the starter. The whole narrative was, okay, he's, you know, an upgrade over Powell, a significant upgrade over Powell. And Powell pretty much started for us. And the fact that he's coming off the bench is interesting. And it shows that they're definitely trying to find a balance between offense and defense. But at the same time, I'm just a bit confused as to how that's going over with Christian Wood because I'm sure he thinks or he thought he was brought in to start you know he's talked about playing with Luka Doncic and even coming off the bench he could still play with Luka but he's in a contract year I'm sure he you know would love to start and when you're looking at who's starting over him it's JaVale McGee and that's a bit um that's a bit strange you know when you're looking at Christian Wood over JaVale McGee Christian Wood is clearly clearly the better um you know offensive player um but i'm i'm thinking the decision has to do with defense and at that point i'm like okay is a drop big in javel mckee that you know crazy like is it that's what you need in the starting offense like you need a javel mckee over a christian wood i'm not so sure but you know we'll just have to see everything is flexible we're still early in the off season it's a, just a weird situation overall because christian wood comes to the mavericks now yeah, like you said, he he's the, the splashiest acquisition, and he came in, I think, hoping to be to play with Luka. He talked about it in his summer league interview, like, man, if there's any player in the NBA that I love to play with in a pick and roll, it's Luka Doncic. And now he gets brought off the bench, uh, especially after the Mavericks lose Jalen Brunson. Christian Wood, a lot of people think that he's their second best player. I don't know where yeah. I don't are you on are you on that that train? Um, yes, be, uh, yes, be, I think it's hard, <laughs> it's hard, but I, I would give him the nod over Dinwiddie because he's a bit more versatile. Dinwiddie, I don't know, I might throw Dorian's name in there, Tim, Dorian, Tim, when, yeah. Tim, when he gets going, like if Tim, when Tim is hot, he's the best player on the map, right? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, there's an argument there. Like, no, but he could, he just doesn't miss. Um, 
but Christian Wood coming off the bench. I have a I have a theory. Tell me what you think. Get, get your BS meter out and tell me if this if this has any weight. So Christian Wood comes off the bench. What do the Mavericks need from him to prove? They need him to prove that he can defend at a good enough, adequate enough level to be the starting center on the team. Because they need that, right? They had Dwight Powell as the starting center, and they played him for like seven minutes in the playoffs and brought in Maxi because his defense wasn't good enough. It just wasn't there. But Maxi's was pretty good. They need Christian Wood to be able to prove that. And so how can Jason Kidd, with Christian Wood in a contract year, give him levels? How can he give him levels of motivation where he's like, all right, I'm going to start here. You know, Jason Kidd, he likes the he likes the little like mind games. He likes to like call people out in in media a little bit. He likes to do you know a couple things to, to get people motivated for Jalen Brunson. It was like, hey, I'm just going to get you paid. And Brunson's like, I'm on board. So he started him off the bench at the beginning of the season and he worked his way into the starting lineup where he just couldn't be taken out of the starting lineup. He was so good. And so now with Christian Wood, there's levels of, of motivation now. There's the level of all right. Show us defense, and then you can start. Okay, show us defense, and then we'll get you your contract extension. We'll get you paid. Okay, then by that time, as soon as he gets to that point, then his motivation should be team success because he's bought in to what Jason Kidd and everybody else wants him to do because that's so important for this team too is to get somebody to buy in. Well, to get somebody to buy in, to get Christian Wood to buy into all this and not think that he's coming in hot stuff, like I'm the 20 and 10 guy, I'm the guy that's going to come in and replace Jalen Brunson, I'm going to be the second best player on this team. Uh, this is the this is the way to like knock him down a peg so that Jason Kidd can build him back up. <laughs> that's my theory. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's good, but it's my theory on it. Okay, I, I think the theory is interesting, especially given that um you're talking about building him back up, coming off the bench, or give, giving him goals. I think that's interesting because I do think – you have to mention to him, especially to get him to buy into his bench role, you have to tell him that there's a chance for him to start. Like, or there's, you know, right. an opportunity, you know, for him to start. I don't think you can tell him, hey, you're just going to be on the bench this, this whole year. I don't think that's going to go over well. So, yeah, if you, you have to open up the opportunity for him to start and, you know, defense might be the way for that. Because I think, I think it's going to be similar to how it was last season, how they were starting Powell and Porzingis. And every stat was telling you that one big on the floor was like the best, <laughs> <laughs> like the best lineups. They're I think listening to be, that. They're listening to those stats at least. Yeah, but I think it's going to be something similar to that, where um, the lineups with Wood <laughs> at the five are just going to be um, super yeah. dominant. But um, I think, I mean, him and Maxi off the bench, that's a good pairing, especially if um, defense is going to be, you know, the thing that he needs to improve on to get into the starting lineup. I think playing next to Maxi should give him a good shot because um, that's defensive pressure, you know, taken off of him. Whereas if he was in the starting lineup with Doring as, you know, his four, um, it, things are a bit different. But, and I understand they probably don't want to try him at the four because I think everyone assumed that was going to be the case when we first heard that yeah, JaVale was going to start. Yeah, I thought he was going to be at a four and I hated that too. So I'm complaining. <laughs> even though, like, no I hated that happens. as well. <laughs> Yeah, no matter what happens, I'm seeing, I'm complaining, but um, I just don't like two big lineups. But at the same time, I didn't think that JaVale McGee <laughs> was going to be the answer. I need so. the I need the JaVale McGee drop. JaVale McGee. Yeah. Here's this. the other thing is that remember that Chris Haynes report on free agency night when the Mavericks like their only move was JaVale McGee. And he was like, yeah. and JaVale McGee has been told he's going to start for the Dallas Mavericks. Yes. What happened before that? What happened before that when they when they agreed to JaVale McGee? He was in talks with the Bucks, and the Mavericks needed him to do a couple things. They needed him to agree to a little bit less of a deal than the full tax mid-level exception, and they needed to give him some incentives because they had to do less than the full tax mid-level because they needed to sign Hardy with that deal. Yeah. They needed to use some of that money to sign Hardy. So they tell JaVale McGee, hey, you'll come in here and you've been a backup for a while. You're you'll start. You'll start with us. Like we're ready. Like with, with Dwight Powell, you're better than him. Like we'll bring you in. We'll give you three years. We'll give you the player option in the last year. Like if you take a little less and you come here, instead of going to Milwaukee, we'll give you all the stuff that you want. And then they went to JaVale. And then they went to Christian Wood and said, Hey, hey listen, we told JaVale he's going to start <laughs> now. He will for like 20 games. Can you wait 20 games? Is that okay? Can you come off the bench for 20 games? 
prove it to us on defense, and then, boom, the starting spot is yours 20 games in. Uh, we do this every year. That We start off really bad, and then we just, we just <laughs> like, all of a sudden, around December, it's like, oh, this is a different, completely different team, and that's the move that they're going to make again to get the momentum. But there's a bunch of different reasons for this. It, it's it's really interesting to see how they're going to – uh, there's a, there's a Luca reason for this too, and I think we, we, let's talk about that coming up. Why is this better for Luka Doncic for Javale McGee to start for Dinwiddie to start Bullock and Dorian Finney-Smith? We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Rock Auto. Dot com with the ever increasing number of makes and models of cars, it's impossible for your local chain auto part dealership to have all the parts that you need for your car. So go to Rock Auto, you can see everything available. You can check out okay. Dodge 2022 Challenger. They got all kinds of stuff on there. They have stuff for different kinds of engines. You just go there. They have stuff for belt drive, body and lamp assembly. They have cooling system. Oof. If you're in Dallas, Texas right now, you need your cooling system to be like immaculate. Like the vibes need to be immaculate in your cooling system. So go to Rock Auto, see all the parts available for your car or truck, check it out, see what they have, and you're going to save money on it. You'll save money on these parts. You can get them delivered straight to your door. You don't have to wait for somebody to try and find them to pull them up. So go check it out. It's rockauto.com. Uh, tell them that Locked On sent you when you get to the end of it. It's Rock Auto. Amazing selection. Reliable low prices. Rockauto.com. All right, SJ, we've been talking about Christian Wood coming off the bench. Tim Cato reporting it. He's been told that the team is planning to keep Reggie Bullock as the fifth starter. There's a Luka angle to this as well with Christian Wood not starting. And the Luka angle is they need a couple of good defenders (laughs) on the perimeter. And they also need another playmaker next to him. When did the Mavericks unlock their offense? When When Jalen Brunson was brought into the starting lineup. What was the lineups that were being played in the playoffs, not this past season, but the season before against the Clippers? It was like Luka, Tim Hardaway, Dorian, Porzingis, and like Powell or Boban, right? Like those are the lineups being played and there wasn't enough playmaking. And so they're valuing the playmaking and the defense for Luka. Like those, that's what those things are for. And then the rim protection of JL McGee over what Christian Wood can bring that they think they can get with Reggie Bullock's three-point shooting, with JaVale McGee's rolling ability, with JaVale McGee's, you know, uh, Dorian's perimeter defense and three-point shooting. Like, they think they can get those things instead of having Christian Wood. I think eventually the best lineup is obviously, like you said earlier, is going to be Christian Wood at the five with the rest of these guys that are out there, maybe Tim instead of Dinwiddie or somebody else. But that's eventually going to be the closing lineup, the best lineup. But to start, they want to start and set the tone with those guys to help Luca. Yeah, and I think that's interesting because I, for one, I hate drop bigs with Luca. And granted, mm. the drop big was Powell, and Powell's not good in drop. Um, but even Porzingis in the drop, granted, he was okay the 2019 season. Um, but, you know, obviously he lost his mobility, all of that. So the drop next to Luca has not looked great. Um, but Javon McGee is a decent drop defender, at least in the regular season. So it should be, it should look better than what it did with Powell. But at the same time, at Dinwiddie, I'm, I have a bold take. I think Dinwiddie might be the the most hated player on the team next season. <laughs> Who's the most hated player now? It's Dwight, right? 100% Powell. It's definitely but Dwight. I think, <laughs> the Mavs, yeah, I think he's the, gone, though. The Mavs, by the way, just moved Dwight. Like, Dwight was a starting center. They heard what Twitter said and moved him all the way to, like, third or fourth string. Like, depending yeah. on who you talk to. Uh, yeah, but, rough. I mean, he's getting his money, so there we go. Why is Dinwiddie going to be the most hated player? Because he is, I feel like in his career, too, he's, like, he's pretty inconsistent at times, especially when he's asked to do a lot. Mm. And I think at the end of last season, like he was great for us after the trade deadline, like he had a hot streak. And sometimes you see this with players that get traded, they kind of, they, they're juiced up. So, so they yeah. go on insane streaks. And towards the end of the regular season, he was kind of tailing off and you had Brunson, you know, bailing him out. <laughs> like, you know, if, if, if he was cold, you know, Brunson was there to take the pressure off. Now we don't really have that. Like, yes, Tim is coming back, but Tim's not, um, that ball handler, you know, playmaker type. Right. Tim is a, you know, shooter. So I think, you know, we're going to ask, you know, a lot of him clearly, you know, with him being in the starting lineup. And not to say he won't deliver, but I I feel like he's going to be very inconsistent. He's definitely, I definitely think he will be less efficient than he was. Um, and 
with that, we're just going to be frustrated, <laughs> um, you know, knowing that we need a bit more from him. There's going to be, yeah, there's going to be more asked of him. I can see that. And the, it, the buck is going to fall with him on offense because no one's going to blame Luca for any offensive struggles the Mavericks have because he's carrying everything, right? It's the, the who, who else has to step up? It's either Dinwiddie or Tim. And if Tim Hardaway was starting, then it may be him. That That's the guy that, that people are hating on. But if Dinwiddie is starting, then all of a sudden it puts more pressure on him and all that. There's a lot being asked of Spencer Dinwiddie because – like him and Luca are the only ball handlers on this team, really. Like, what, yeah. what we've seen from Jaden Hardy in summer league is not giving me a lot of encouragement that he's going to come in and be a great ball handler right away. He's still going to have to work into this rotation if he's if he's going to his rookie year. Frank Nilakina, I'm, I'm not. I, he's done some cool stuff in transition. Like, like it's cool when I see him like dribble and pass, but that's not something you want to rely on, right? Like, and so there's a lot on Spencer Dinwiddie's shoulders. So I'm kind of with you that he may be the scapegoat. Uh, at certain times, and especially if Christian Wood is killing it, Dinwiddie's going to be looked at as the guy that is taking his spot. And then all of a sudden, you know, Mavs fans will be clamoring for, "Hey, just just shift everybody down, shift the two wings down, start Wood and McGee, start the, the start the Bang Bros, and start Luca, right? <laughs> like start those guys, and start Christian Wood with them. It, it's interesting, but this whole thing revolves around Luca, and it is. It's just what is better for him. And I don't think they're thinking about what's better for Christian Wood. But should they be thinking about what's better for Christian Wood? Because he is in a contract year. Like, do we consider that at all? Or do we care about that at all? Thinking what's better for him? We should care. Because um, it's a, it's a dull-edged sword. Like, I when the trade first happened, I saw people saying, oh, you know, he's in a contract year. He's going to buy in. You know, he's going to try his hardest to get paid and all that. But at the same time, he could also check out. Um, they said that or, about Dennis Smith, or uh, about a uh, Dennis Schroeder in Boston too, and, that, and they were like ready to ship his ass out of there. They're like, get out! Like we're we're ready for you to leave. He didn't buy in. Exactly. So, <laughs> and especially if he's coming off the bench too, he might, you know, think he's in a shot chucker role, <laughs> and you know, putting up shots, not not necessarily playing together. So it could really it could either help you know a lot or it could hurt. So I think um, I think you need to consider. Um, the fact that he is in a contract year and whether or not you want to extend him or not, because that was a whole issue with, you know, he who shall not be named that just left, um, you know, with an extension, there was a lot of talk about extensions in, in season. So if we don't offer one, he might be upset, you know, in the off season that we didn't offer one and, you know, take that to heart. So I think it's something that definitely needs to be considered. By everyone playing with fire, right? A guy that hasn't yeah. been with it. I think he, the longest he's been of the team is the Rockets, like two years. Yeah. He was, it was a, them and, and that was it. And so, hey, this team didn't believe in me. They were bringing me off the bench to start. And so, why would he sign a contract extension? Um, the money's going to talk eventually with him because he hasn't made a ton in his career. But, but yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, let's let's transition over to Donovan Mitchell because Adrian Wojnarowski came out with a report that Donovan Mitchell is. Like the Jazz are actually fielding offers. Now, whether that report came from the Jazz, whether that report came from CAA, who we know we know very well for he who should not be named by SJ's agent, um, <laughs> Jalen Brunson, and whether it came from him or Don- Donovan Mitchell's camp or whoever. Uh, Andy Larson uh, uh, writes about the Jazz, a beat writer for the Jazz, had a really interesting couple tweets today about who is that coming from and what that means for the Jazz in each one of them? If it's coming from the Jazz, then it's, hey, okay, we're ready for a bidding war to start. If it's coming from Donovan Mitchell, it's like, hey, we want to plant this story so that I can have a reason to ask out. <laughs> like if it's coming from CAA, then maybe it's, you know, hey, we want out and we want people to and teams to start fielding offers. But what do you think this means for the Mavericks? It, obviously, if they do trade him, they're not going to get like an all-star back for him. They're, they're going to be a worse team. So it takes them out of the playoff picture, really. Uh, but what do you think is the biggest fallout that, that Mavs fan, fans should be watching for this Donovan Mitchell trade? Well, first off, I'd like to say this is lovely to see. This is what I've, I've wanted for a while. <laughs> um, I have been plotting on destroying this Jazz core, and it happened. So this has been great to watch. <laughs> Um, but in terms of the Donovan, Mavs ruined like, their franchise, they ruined it. I love it. I love it. It's, it's so great. Um, <laughs> but with Gobert gone, it was clear. I just, I never really bought that they were super committed with retooling around Donovan Mitchell. They have no wings on their roster. Like there's like their roster is very strange right now. Yeah. And it like, you could tell that they were, they're, 
one foot out the door in terms of rebuilding and that's what's about to happen with this donovan mitchell trade and i think with us clearly we're not in the you know running to get donovan mitchell with our assets (laughs) we're a we're a clean up the scraps kind of team like with these kind of trades like we should be looking to be maybe a third team or you know trying to snag someone while the main trade is you know happening and with that being said i think um pat bev i'm fixated on pat mm. bev <laughs> right now um there was there's been a trade you know floated around the, the timeline um pat bev for um powell and maybe like a second or something and yeah. that helps because utah has like no bigs um so you know they can get an expiring contract and a big that you know can play you know a veteran um that obviously won't really help you you know Dwight Powell is not going to get you several wins so they don't have to worry about that but he also can you know eat minutes so um I think Pat Bev for Dwight Powell is in everyone's best interest because that gives us another ball handler um and a defender and I there's talk about I think he can come and start some people are pushing back on that um and I get it he's he's really a bench player but next to Luca he could be okay in the backcourt and that way you can keep Dinwiddie off the bench um to keep the pressure off him too but I think Pat Bev is definitely probably our top target we should be looking at Mm. and I like Boyan if we could snatch him somehow as an expiring contract to um a guy that could play um I'm not interested in Conley I'm so sorry he's cooked food I am just I'm just not interested in people we make look so bad that's why I wasn't happy about JaVale McGee because it was like okay we played him off the floor like two weeks ago (laughs) and we just picked him up and same thing with Conley like he looks so bad and now we're about to give give up almost give up assets to get you know pay him 20 million dollars so and I get it he can you know in a bench role it might be different but I'm just a bit triggered <laughs> at getting <laughs> at getting Conley. But um Jared Vanderbilt is another one um that could be intriguing. But other than that, um I I don't think there's I don't think we have the asset or we should be giving away assets for anybody else, like on that roster. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a lot to talk about with the the fallout from Donovan Mitchell. There's more to talk about with those those five or six players from the Jazz that could be on the move now that they're going to be completely rebuilding. So we'll talk about that coming up, and I guess we'll touch on the summer league. We'll talk touch on Hardy and, and <laughs> anything good that happened in the game last night. We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bet Online. It has everything that you want from spreads to lines to odds, everything. They have EuroBasket coming up. Serbia, number one, plus 275. France is number two, plus 500. Tied with Greece, they're plus 500. And Slovenia is plus 500. So they have that that trio of teams, France, Greece, and Slovenia, all right there with the second best odds. And then Spain is plus 900. Lithuania, plus 1,200. Italy, plus 1,400. And then you just keep going down the line. Hungary, plus 20,000. Estonia, plus 20,000. Not great. Not great. Uh, Bojan Bogdanovic is Bosnia. Her, uh, is a plus 15,000. So they got all kinds of odds for um, Eurobasket, all kinds of odds for MLB, for NHL, for boxing, for fighting, any kind of stuff. Go check it out. It's Bet Online where the game starts. All right, SJ, we've been talking about Donovan Mitchell. The Jazz are now f- officially, or I guess reportedly officially, fielding offers for him. The fallout from them is, I, th- I think it just takes them completely out of the playoffs. Like, if they trade Donovan Mitchell, they're getting back assets. There's not many teams that trade, like, good player for good player anymore. It just doesn't really happen. And so that takes them out of the playoffs. But for the Mavericks, like you said, they they kind of clean up the scraps. So I thought that was a good good way that you put that. Um I tweeted this out today. I was like, "Who do you who would you want if you could have one of those five people?" And a lot of people said Bogdanovich. And I think that's I think that may be the answer because if Reggie's going to start with Dorian, then all of a sudden your backup wings are Tim, Frank, Josh, and then I guess Theo Pinson a little bit. Like those are your backup wings, and so all of a sudden, like you have some depth problems. If that's what you're going to start, if you're going to start those two guys in, in Bullock and Finney Smith, then you're a little bit shallow on the wings. And they still wanted a wing. They still, like the Mavericks, that was like their one thing coming into the offseason was like, get re-sign Jalen Brunson, get a wing, and then get a rim protector. They got the rim protector, I guess, in JaVale. They didn't re-sign Brunson, and now they need to get a wing somehow. And so I think Bogdanovich is my choice if they could get him. I think he may be the hardest to get because he, you know, 
averages 18 points a game the last four years. He can, you know, still do a lot. He can defend. He cannot defend Luka, but he can defend a lot of other players in the NBA. Uh, it's wild. Like, the most high-profile games he's been in, he defends LeBron and Luka, and they make him look terrible. It's like, this guy can't catch a break with who he's asked to guard in playoff series. Uh, but Bogdanovich, I think, would be my choice. He gives him another shooter uh, as well. The Pat Beverly one, like you said, is interesting. He's not a ball handler to me. Like I, I would not trust him to handle the ball. He can hit a three, though. He's, he can hit a three, which which is nice. And if you started him, imagine a starting lineup with, with Pat Bev, Bullock, Dinwiddie. No, Pat Bev, Bullock, Dorian, and then JaVale like, defending the rim around Luka. Like, that's a really good that, – that can be a really good defensive lineup. And then maybe you have enough perimeter defense that you can then switch out Wood for JaVale. Like, maybe that unlocks it to where you say, okay, we have enough perimeter defense that Christian Wood can just clean up stuff around the rim. He doesn't have to be a one-on-one post defender and, and all that kind of stuff. Like, maybe that. And so I kind of get what you're, what you're saying about Patrick Beverly too. Yeah. Um, Boyan, though – yeah, Boyan, I – understand why Bowen's people's you know top choice but I think he's probably one of the most valuable guys on the roster left so they're probably going to uh, other than you know Donovan Mitchell right. so they're probably gonna be looking for um you know a good return for him and I am definitely not giving up a first for an expiring so yeah right you know we'll see well not, I at least not a, at least him. not another one they gave up one yeah. for, they gave up one for Christian Wood <laughs> To come off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Um, but yeah, they, the problem with them is they got a first round pick for Royce O'Neal. Like all of it, they got that first round pick for Royce O'Neal. And then they got that crazy haul for Rudy Gobert. Like, like Danny Ainge in that front office for the Jazz, their, their thoughts of what they should be able to get back for some of their assets are probably going to be insane, right? Like thinking that they could, like, could we get two picks for Bogdanovich? Okay. Okay, like I don't, I don't know about that, but th- that's probably what they're going to be asking. Like, hey, we got a first for Royce O'Neal. What can we get for these players on our team that are actually good? You know what I mean? Um, that, that it's just going to be interesting to see what they ask for. But the Donovan Mitchell stuff, the saga will continue. He, he'll get traded. Isaac and I will we'll talk about it on the pod going forward. Um, let's end here with talking about the um, about summer league so far. The Mavericks lost just in. Just Marv's fashion, like like Doyle on Twitter, Kobe Beef has. Anytime the Mavericks are playing bad, he calls them the Marv's. This was as Marv's as they could be. Um, what did you think about Jared Dudley's coaching debut and this team coming out? Like this team, they scored 13 points in the first quarter, 12 points in the second quarter. A late run in the third quarter gave them 22 points, but they had like they had like 12 points for most of that quarter, and then uh, finished with 31. And in garbage time in summer league, I did not expect that. <laughs> Um, what if just let's just start start with this? What have you thought about Hardy so far? Because he's kind of the one bright spot. Him and Lawson have been the one bright spot in summer league. Well, I mean, he had a great debut. You know, like it wasn't like perfect, but you know, twenty eight points. You know, showcased a lot of um, you know, the stuff that he was like were touted as his weakness. He kind of showed that okay, you know, I can finish around the rim. Um, I can you know get by dudes, all that, but um. It's been rough, you know, since then. Pretty rough. He had a, like, the second game was pretty bad, but he finished with 14 points because he got to the line. Um, and this game was, again, not. He, did, he shot the same, great. 4 of 15 from the field, <laughs> yeah. didn't get to the line, hit one free throw, scored 11 points, didn't have any assists. This was the, probably his roughest game. Yeah, this was the, the worst game, definitely. And it just shows that um, he's not like, I know we were all you know overreacting to game one. Um, I know people were thinking, oh, he can come in, play 20 minutes a night. Yeah, this was a wake up call that we need to pump the brakes. <laughs> and I mean, I my comp for him, like at least on the, you know, on the bright side of his rookie season was probably like a Kobe White type thing. Mm. Um, but we will, I don't think he'll get the minutes to really, um, showcase that unless he like has a dramatic, you know, like improvement throughout the course of this off season. But I mean, he, he just needs work, but there's definitely bright spots. Um, he, especially from the first game, like he looks comfortable in terms of passing the ball and our team sucks. So I, his assist numbers, I'm not gonna you know, hold that against him because <laughs> I've counted several plays where he should have definitely like a hundred, especially on the inside. Like some of these guys cannot finish and it's like, okay. Um, right. but whatever. So I think he, like his handle is, um, his handle is interesting because 
he can get by guys but when he tries to do too much like he's getting ripped like he turns the ball wow. over a lot yeah he's a walking turnover at this point and i mean things would be different because he's not gonna play on the ball and i know people are looking to right. see how he looks next to luca and all that um you know playing off the ball but i don't think he's gonna get too much run next to luca honestly this well, season well they've even they've even started him off the ball in every game like they started yeah. harding in the first game they started Pete piola in the, the these last two games as the point guard. And so they're they're wanting to run Jaden Hardy off the ball even even in this. Greg St. Jean, who started off as the the coach of Summer League and coached you no know, the practices all the way up, said, Hey, we want to create good habits in Hardy. We want we want or in Jaden Hardy. We want to show him like, okay, what what he's gonna be asked to do and build build him up in this. And I think part of that is they want they they envision him off the ball a little bit. Uh, because he does, like you, like you said, with the turnovers and, and dribbling, he needs a year with Sham God. Like Sham God should be like his guy. Like he should be stuck next to Sham God, work on the dribble drills just like Harrison Barnes did. Like Harrison Barnes working one year with with Sham God did wonders for him, wonders for him. It's done wonders for Dorian Fitty Smith. Like Frank Nilakina, I think has has developed well as a ball handler because of of uh, what God Sham God can do, the assistant coach for the Mavericks. So I think if Hardy can can work with him improve that ball handling it's going to be a lot better for him he needs that kind of ball handling and then um but yeah I, he has to work to get minutes right and it's you know it's pretty obvious he the other thing is like you said this team is terrible <laughs> this team oh, is so really bad. bad compared to some of these other teams where the thunder are playing like their actual lineups like they played giddy who started every game they played jeremiah robinson earl who's like their starting center and then chet who's the number two overall pick and then their other like lottery picks or whatever this team, this Mavericks team, has two draft picks on it. Not just first round picks, draft picks. And it's uh, uh, Mie Oni, who was drafted 58th in 2019. And it's Jaden Hardy, who was drafted 37th this past year. Like, I, I kind of wonder if he's being put, if, if it's, it's a, he's playing in a bad situation on this team because there's just nobody else to take any of the the pressure off of him at all. There's no spacing on this team at all. Like it's just brutal for him to try and drive through anything because there's just no space. There's, there's nobody to like finish. Like you were saying earlier, like Moses Wright got benched in this game, which I actually find kind of interesting because AJ Lawson is a guy we've been clamoring for to be the other two way. And Moses Wright kind of has that spot right now, but he got benched today and didn't, you know, didn't start the game. They, they started Bingham instead of him. They started AJ Lawson. They started uh, Piola Harding. Uh, and so I'm interested to see what happens with him. AJ Lawson, 10 points. He hit two threes. He had, you know, a couple of turnovers. It wasn't a, a stellar night for him either. He was minus him and Hardy were minus 29 in this game. <laughs> Just brutal. And, uh, they only played 10 minute quarters guys. <laughs> it was brutal for them, but, um, Bunch more summer league games to go. You can go follow uh, SJ at SJ at SJ Basketball Eight on Twitter. She's got spicy takes all the time. Just always tweeting out spicy takes. Um, she's got her own podcast. You can find it on her Twitter. Go ahead and check that out, guys. We'll be back tomorrow with another show breaking down the Mavericks and talking about Christian Wood coming off the bench. Uh, thanks for making us your first listen. Go check out the Locked On NBA show. Great stuff from Vegas. We have boots on the ground there. Uh, it's your daily NBA update in just 30 minutes. Locked on NBA, the podcast, or on YouTube. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mavs.